Okay. When you open up Marvelous Designer for the first time, you're going to see this notification. You're just going to hit skip and then wait for Marvelous to upload, I mean, open up. When it does, it should look something like this environment. Give me a second, it's loading. Actually, I think it might load faster if I close Second Life. But I don't feel like it. Just let it go. <laughs> okay, so when you open it up, it's going to ask you the avatar editor. It's going to put a default avatar here. And we're just going to close this because we don't need it. And because we're not making dresses for the guy, we're just going to hit new and get rid of it. Now, our next step is to bring in our Jake model so we can start making clothes for it. Because I don't know about you, but I don't feel like making clothes on a female, a default female model, and then having to resize all of that down to Jake. That kind of defeats all the purpose of us exporting the model in the first place. So, what we're going to do is go to File, Open, and then Avatar. And then you're going to navigate to our project folder, the Jake, and select the dummy.obj. Then they're going to prompt you with this window here. And you're just going to press the little M, the lowercase M, and then hit OK. And then jake comes in in all his red glory the red jake is probably what we should have called it <laughs> now let's say you already have your jake model and you don't feel like opening or you want to tr give this to people and you don't feel like telling them to save it as um oh, hang on one second i messed up there let's say you have the jake model like this and you want to pass it along to your friends so that they can work on the model as well but you don't feel like telling them press the M button and then importing it in. We can actually save this Jake as a, um, an avatar, like so. So all you have to do is just open the um, avatar file in Blender, and it's like, and I'm in Marvel's Designer, and it's just like, boop, there we go. So what we're gonna do is hit save as and then avatar, and then we just want to name it as Jake. Or we could have named it Red Jake, whatever. And then it save as AVT. So now you can just pass it along to any of your friends. And they'll just open it up in any of their marvelous designers. And don't have to import the OBJ in and all that jazz. It's just right there. Alright, with that said, we also need to do one more thing. Because sometimes when people freshly open up their marvelous designer, it may look like this. And it only has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons. When it should have a whole bar full of buttons. So if you notice that you only have seven buttons over here on this side of your screen, I just want you to take your cursor and put it into this gray area. Right click and then enable, press 2D pattern toolbar. And that will enable your 2D tools. Speaking of our 2D tools... We're going to talk about those real quick so you will know what I'm doing and how you can make clothes in Marvelous Designer. So let's begin with explaining what these buttons do. At the top, you'll notice a string of buttons here. These are your main pattern creation tools. The Create Polygon, the Create Rectangle, the Create Circle, and then your internal polygon, square, and circle buttons, as well as a dart. But we don't talk about darts because nobody knows what darts do. It's a mystery. So um, I'm going to tell you the one you're going to be using the most, and this is the Create Polygon tool. It allows you to create pretty much any pattern that you want um, in the 2D window, as long as the dots aren't too close together and you return back to the first dot. Now I know you may see, okay, yeah, I have the pattern, but it's not showing over here in the 3D window. That's because we have to turn on the Sync button first for it to work. If you notice that you're creating patterns in the 2D window, which is this window right here with the grid, and there's nothing showing up in the 3D window over there with the model, then it's because the pattern is not on. Now, sometimes you may accidentally turn off the sync button, and then if you do that, you'll notice that the patterns will turn red. And then, if you try creating something in here, you'll notice that it doesn't show up on there. So if this is happening to you, just turn on your sync, and you'll see your pattern will come back to you. So another pattern tool that you use is the Create Rectangle, which allows you to pretty much click, drag, and click, and then create rectangles on your pattern, which is easier to do than trying to use the Polygon tool and create a rectangle. Um, next to that is our Create a Circle, like this. And that allows you to do really easy circle patterns on here which is good for skirts and stuff like that although I'm not entirely sure how that would work with men but we'll see 
<laughs> now next to these you will see I'll just create a, a square for this demonstration and pin it in the air do, do, do. oh I forgot do, 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 do. okay so um, next to this you'll see the which look like the uh, create polygon tools but they're red these are internal tools and these are internal patterns that you can put inside your regular pattern so these non red tools are called external patterns and then the red ones are internal patterns so with the internal pattern tools you can create any kind of design you want but you don't have to return back to the first dot like the other one now you can use the polygon tool to create freehand design like this or you can use the internal one to create internal squares like this one and internal circles like so now I bet you're wondering why would I need to create internal shapes inside my pattern well I'll explain it <laughs> well with internal um, patterns you can use it to create all kinds of things such as folds so I'm gonna give you a demonstration of it and pleats and elastic so I'm gonna create four lines because that'd be easy and I'm gonna select them all holding down shift as I select the lines and then let's turn our simulation on okay now keep your eye on both this box and this box so I can show you what happened so when we have our internal line selected we can turn on the fold angle and you see it creates folds and pleats depending on how we turn what direction we turn our fold angle and it could be even more intense the higher the fold strength is between this and this now if you want um, we can turn off folds we can also use it as elastic and you see we can turn the ratio up to like this I like that now I've seen somebody play with elastic and it is so much fun um, making like sweat bands like uh, not bands like little sprinkly waist thingies around the uh, I don't know what those called, but I know it looked cool when they did it around their pants. It was like a waistband and it was all sprinkly up like this. And I thought that was cool. So you can have fun playing with the elastic. Um, another thing that these lines are good for, let me turn off the dang elastic, <laughs> is attaching other patterns to it. Like other pieces of fabric onto it. So let's pretend like you wanted to add like a pocket or an additional, well, when I'm doing women's clothing, sometimes it requires ruffles. And there's some men's shirts that have ruffles. So let's say you want to add a ruffle to your shirt. You would create the internal pattern and you would sew it to it. Make it layer two because we don't want it colliding. Too. And when we sew it to it, you see we have something to attach it to. So you can see. So you see, that works as well when it comes to attaching uh, the fabric to this. And of course, we can't forget the, the best part of internal tools is creating holes inside your garment. So when you have an internal tool, uh, an internal shape, you can right click on it and then select convert to hole and then boom, you have a hole inside your garment. So use that carefully <laughs> when you're making your holes. So that's what the internal lines are for. Um, next to those lines, let's get rid of this and that, we have our manipulation tools, which I'm going to pause again. These are pretty much simple. This allows you to edit one, the white arrow is our edit pattern. It allows you to grab dots and lines and contort the pattern the way you want. Uh, the black arrow is a transform pattern, which allows you to make like you know stretch multiple patterns and stuff at once like that and rotate them if you need to be next to it is our add curve which allows you to add curves to your pattern like so which is great for like collars and stuff like that which you'll see later on in the next tutorial and um, next to that edit curve is the edit curve point which allows you to fine tune your curves and make even curvier curves <laughs> and then next to that button is our edit point so you can add more points of manipulation onto your pattern 
to further manipulate your pattern any way you want. Let's say you design something and you realize you wanted to, to pull it in more or you wanted to edit the pattern some more. You would just add more points to it and then uh, further fine tune it. So it's, it helps out to play around with all of those tools. So, um, then I guess the last thing on here is our sewing tools. But in order to show you how to sew, I guess I should save that one for when I'm actually showing you something to sew. It makes more sense that way. So because I'm already at the 10 minute mark on this video, I guess we'll end it here. And then we'll go to the next video where I'll show you how to make a basic t-shirt and pants for your Jake model. So I'll see you guys in our next video. And hope you're following along so far.